May God fill you all with great hope and joy and peace in your believing. Amen. Our homily this morning for our Good Friday Stations of the Cross is from the verse from Isaiah, By his wounds we are healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When faced with trauma, our flight or fight response kicks in. It's almost immediate. The human psyche fights to stay alive, to be safe, to save life. We can almost accept the deadly end if we see the purpose. How often when we hear of a young person dying, oh, they had so much more life to live Why? It just doesn't make sense. On Good Friday, the Lord of all living succumbs to death. He who keeps a sparrow protected when falling to the ground doesn't protect himself. Jesus does not murder, but he is killed. Jesus does not engage in violence, but violence is driven against him. Jesus has shown anger, but he never encourages others to use anger for harming anyone even those against us. Indeed, in Jesus' final ministry upon the cross, he calls for his Father in heaven to forgive them. Jesus actually broadens the commandment against murder. His Sermon on the Mount speaks of how anger against a brother or sister makes us liable to judgment. Insulting a brother or sister makes us liable to the court. And saying, you fool, makes us liable to the hell of fire. All of that within his word of encouragement that we reconcile with those who condemn us. Jesus nailed to a cross is a mission of love. All of his followers, including we ourselves, recognize this and trust him as the Lord of love. And how deeply we need that love because we do get angry and insulting and speak and think mean-spirited words about our brothers and sisters. And if we don't say it, we imagine it and maybe even carry it locked away where we think no one can see it. And if you think otherwise, consider this the next time someone cuts you off on the highway. All of humanity is, by virtue of the Creator's creation, brother and sisters. That Creator's creation also includes the very environment of our planet, the rocks beneath our feet. And there are also the brothers and sisters we have by faith who are part of the community we call the church. And our calling involves great work in maintaining that bond of love with all of these. Indeed, the task is one that overwhelms all of us at times. How do we reconcile? A high priest Caiaphas figured it out. Just let one die that peace may prevail. It sounds so logical, so practical when... Make, why make everyone miserable? Let one take the hit for the team. Caiaphas' peace is only political. In view of the Middle East today, with what seems an endless war between Israel and Gaza, just political peace would be a major accomplishment. But the divine call of Jesus is embracing the life of that one who is as prince, achieves real peace, lasting forever and growing in overwhelming ways that even Caiaphas never even considered. Jesus' peace reconciles each and every one of us to God and to one another in a way that we could never do on our own. Jesus doesn't lash out at those hurting him. He doesn't threaten. He prays, Father, thy will be done. We cannot undo our sinful condition. Only Jesus can undo it. He treats us as if it doesn't even exist with his grace. He covers us up in his own body. Without his grace, we are without any hope. Evil plans, they're still all around us. Jesus is surrounded by it, hanging on a cross between two thieves. Jesus didn't even commit a crime. But he suffers as the worst offender. The very heart of God is wounded in the death of Jesus for the sins of the world. And by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus' critics cannot and will not see the love of God at work. Jesus never gave up on them. He doesn't give up on anyone because love never ends. And again, that's that agape, that sacrificing, that kind of love that is there till the end. We are never abandoned. Even though Jesus is abandoned on the cross, the wounds of Jesus, the wounds of his death are covering his body 
so that murder and death do not receive the last word. Love, reconciliation, everlasting peace, those have the last word. The phrase is entitled given at him at his birth, come to life at his death. We see the world and all of humanity now through the lens, the crosshairs of the cross, if you will. God's healing through Christ frees our hearts and our lives from judgment. We are no longer sinful criminals with whom Jesus associated with even in death. We are forgiven children of the Heavenly Father, graced deeply and daily by his care. His wounds will always give healing. His wounds give our own wounded lives purpose. His wounds are glorious and they are saving. His wounds are the awards for dying and rising and reconciling. His wounds give healing power to the wounds that hurt us because they become avenues of healing. If we have been wounded and won victory in Jesus, this will give hope and meaning and purpose as we convey the gospel to those we encounter. And the gospel is seen in the church's ministry of reconciling. This is the gospel love and peace given to us for our good, to enjoy it and to share it. We are like clay pots carrying out this mission because our own cracks and foibles and failings are going to show. But in the end of the day, it's not really about us. It's about the one who gives his life for our sake and for the sake of the world. We come to our brothers and sisters with this treasure, even if it wounds us, even when it kills us. But love, yes, love, will be heard over all the trauma. We fight until we have our flight into the paradise which Jesus promised, and the healing wounds of Christ will be all the more visible. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God which goes beyond our human understanding guard your hearts and lives in the one true faith in Jesus Christ, now and always. Amen.